Ladies and gentlemen, it is the end of Asian cinema season 2017. I've decided to nip this thing in the bud. I've decided to call it a day. The walls are crumbling down around me and I think it's just time to say enough is enough and it's over. I have extended this thing beyond where I wanted it to go. Initially it was Asian cinema month. Then I called it season in case I wanted to extend it, which I did for a very specific reason, which I'll get to at the end of the video. But outside of that specific reason, which isn't going to come to fruition now anyway, I feel like I should just stop now while I'm kind of ahead. I feel like I'm ahead. I feel like the project has been tremendously successful, mainly from a movie watching standpoint for me, but also with the videos. I'm really happy with the videos. We had a few hiccups with a couple of videos getting, uh, you know, taken down and stuff. I got them back up again, so that was great. But yeah, uh, for all intents and purposes, Asian cinema season is now over. Now, there is one more video to come. And if you're keeping up with everything, you'll probably know what that is. My Akira Kurosawa movie marathon, which I was going to have up on Sunday, uh, a few days ago. And I just d didn't have enough time to finish editing it. So I pushed it to Monday, finished editing it on the Sunday, rendered it overnight. And it took about 11 hours and it froze on 82%. So I put something else up on Monday and I thought, okay, I'll put it up on Tuesday. So I rendered it overnight again, it went through, it worked, it was successful, I uploaded it, it took 3-4 hours to upload, another 3 hours to process, it went online, about 10 people saw it, and then it got blocked. Now that was my own fault actually, because I used a clip from one of Kurosawa's movies in the intro. 20 second clip, you know, fair use, but you know, Fox decided that uh, they weren't happy about that, so the video got blocked. That's fair enough, that's my bad for taking the risk. So, I had to redo the intro and re-render the whole thing again overnight for the third time this week. And so I woke up this morning after 11 hours of rendering and it had frozen on 82% again. So <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with the Kurosawa in Color Marathon. Hopefully I'll get it up in the next couple of days. I will do my very best. It's a very long video, so it's not something I can just kind of rectify and fix quickly. So that's just the nature of it. But I will definitely get it up and that will be the, the last hurrah of Asian cinema season. And, you know, I kind of felt like I needed to get a video up every single day, which is just stupid. But it's, it's purely me just wanting to kind of make it a big deal and to have there be at least one video every single day. In a couple of days, or at least, I think, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten days of the season, I had two videos in one day. So... Hopefully you guys enjoyed a lot of the content. Uh, thank you to the people who watched. Thank you to the people who commented uh, as well. And I'm yeah, I'm happy with it. You know, there's a lot of things that could have gone differently, and I want to talk about that in this video. Um, but first of all, before I get to the more Asian cinema season reflections, just an update on what's coming over the next you know three weeks or so for the end of 2017. This is a channel update as well. This is a big mishmash of all sorts of channel updatiness, um, which is always a bit of a wanky subject. Hey, here's what I'm doing coming up. But, you know, it's kind of fun to kind of map out your plans and see how they do pan out, I suppose. So, for the next couple of weeks, uh, throughout December, well, I guess, well, yeah, probably I'll be doing a lot of Star Wars videos, probably. Uh, next week, on Wednesday the 13th of December, I'll be getting up my spoiler-free first reactions to Star Wars The Last Jedi. I see it on the 13th in the morning, so I'll be able to get a video up, and trust me, there'll be no spoilers in the video, just my initial reactions, if you're interested. I know it comes out on the 14th in the UK and the 15th in America and so on. And then in the coming weeks, I'll have, you know, a spoiler-filled review, uh, and also kind of probably my big discussion like I did with The Force Awakens, which was like a near two hour long video. So there's that, the, the Star Wars stuff. Uh, there's probably be one more Road to Episode 8 video before next week too. The John Carpenter 24 hour movie marathon, completing Carpenter. That project which I kind of announced at the end of November, uh, end of October I should say, I thought I'd be able to do that marathon at the beginning of this month, December, but Asian cinema season overran, so I don't have the time to do it. So that'll be bumped to 2018 at some point, but rest assured that will be coming next year. People have been asking me about my next silent movie marathon. I've done one every year for the past few years, and I haven't done one this year. Kind of. I did half of one in the summer. Uh, silent Movie Marathon 4, A History of Silence. I was really amped up about it. I had a really cool concept going from the very beginning, the first ever movies, up until present day with uh, silent movies that are done, you know, uh, in an age where it doesn't need to be done. So I did half of that. I need to finish it. So that, again, will have to be pushed to next year sometime. And there's probably going to be a few Blu-ray updates coming in the next couple of weeks. I'll be going home uh, for a flying visit for Christmas to visit family and so on and so forth. And there's accumulated about six months worth of stuff that I've had ordered to the UK. So uh, there'll be quite a few of those videos, no doubt. But 
there was a very specific reason, as I said, that I wanted to extend Asian cinema season. That's because the original plan was to end on this big movie marathon video that was going to be like three, four, five, maybe even six hours long. And what was that video? It was a movie vlog marathon of me watching every movie in this box set. The Zatoichi, The Blind Swordsman, Blu-ray collection from the Criterion uh, collection. Uh, I wanted to watch every film in this, which is 25 movies, and do a big movie vlog marathon. So not really a, a marathon that has like loads of images interspersed of the movies, but just me sitting down and powering through 25 movies in this mammoth box set. I'm 15 movies in, <laughs> so I'm about 10 short. And honestly, it was one of those things where, you know, for Asian cinema season, I've been planning this for months, three, four months in the making, and I've been watching movies and making videos for Asian cinema season for about two and a half months. And it kind of feels weird to be letting go of it now because it's taken up such a big chunk of the past few months of my life in terms of uh, in all the, the YouTube stuff I've been doing has been solely focused on doing that stuff. But the Zatoichi Marathon, I started on November 1st, and I wanted to do it throughout Asian cinema season because by the time we started this thing on November 1st, 2017, I had like 19 videos done, uploaded, and scheduled, ready to go. So for that first half of the month, I didn't really need to do that much, but uh, things started just popping up. You know, the new Battlefront game came out. You know, real life got in the way. I got a few extra jobs with work that I wasn't anticipating, and I needed to focus on them first and foremost. So there was a lot of stuff going on. And I was trying to just watch one Zatoichi movie a day. And these are very short movies, you know, 80, 90 minute movies. But I, I kind of eventually slacked. And so they fell by the wayside. But I'm glad they did because that meant that I could do these spontaneous things that I wasn't quite expecting to do. Like the Satyajit Rai uh, movies. I was expecting to maybe watch the Apu trilogy, but not, you know, the Music Room as well. And that kind of became a whole thing. And I was obsessed with those films for a while. And then the Abbas Kiarostami reviews, which I was planning to do one of Close Up. And then I watched like five movies, you know, so these little mini marathons started popping up without me really meaning them to. The Kurosawa in Color Marathon was going to be three films. It ended up being five, and then I watched the other two as well. So the things just started growing and evolving as I was going through Asian cinema season. Um, so I'm really happy with how it went, but the, the Zatoichi Marathon will have to go on the back burner for a while. But I would very much like to finish this by the end of the year, which is very possible and maybe deliver it on Christmas Day or something, or on Boxing Day, or New Year's Eve maybe to, to kind of round off the year, because also there's a 26th movie, which I really want to watch. So I've ordered the, the DVD, it hasn't turned up yet, so maybe when that comes I can kind of finish off those films and deliver this humongous video. I don't know how, if anyone will be even interested in me talking about 25 of these films. I know people like these films, but they're not that popular. You know, we're not talking James Bond here. We're not talking like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. It's not that the most popular franchise, and I, I, I'd be very surprised if there was a lot of people who know about all 25 of these films and have an opinion on all of them. Even me, having been through 15 of them over the past month, I, I'm getting a bit hazy on some of them. You know, they're quite similar, but I've been loving watching them and talking about them too. So, and, and you'll see that in the marathon, how I, I'm going through all these different kind of mindsets, like, I can do this, I can do it, one per day, well, okay, I slacked one day, but I can make it up, you know, tomorrow, and I just keep slacking and slacking, so you'll see the, the gradual kind of collapse of my resolve of doing it, but anyway, that, that'll hopefully be coming at the end of the month, I really want to get that finished and done, because I've, I've loved doing it, and I would love to complete it, so, Asian cinema season, reflecting on it, and so on. I'm really happy with most of the videos. Uh, some of them, you know, are just kind of there. But I was really happy with the, I mean, again, if you haven't seen many of them, this could be kind of a, a bit of a primer, you know, to kind of go back and check out ones I'd recommend you to watch. The Apu Trilogy reviews, I think, were, were pretty good. I, I enjoyed my thoughts, uh, you know, how I conveyed my thoughts. That's the thing with these reviews. And I had a couple of people during Asian cinema season leave some comments saying, like, oh, you're out of your depth, you don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, well, I, I don't claim to know what I'm talking about, you know, but I do enjoy it when... I really can tell you and express to you why I like the film and, and, and specifically scene by scene or moment by moment or you know if there's any little details I can pick out and say this is why it works for me. I, I really enjoy that when I'm able to express myself. Sometimes you, you really enjoy something but you don't know how to put it into words. So the Apu trilogy, I was really happy with those reviews. Also the Music Room, that kind of mini little Satyajit Rai series of reviews I was really happy with. You know, the, the Kurosawa reviews uh, for Dursu Uzala and Ran, even Rashomon and The Hidden Fortress. Did quite a few Kurosawa reviews this month and also 
If you haven't seen the Dursu Uzala and Ran reviews um, and you're interested in them, uh, hold off a little bit because they're both uh, collected in the Kurosawa in Color Marathon to make it a bit more of a complete video. So, and hopefully again that'll be coming in the next couple of days. Uh, what else was I kind of happy with? Um, I suppose the Abbas Kiristami uh, review, well I guess not the, I wasn't too happy with the reviews of those, but I, I enjoyed watching those films so much, you know. Um, in fact, I have a letterbox list, uh, privately, where I've ranked all of the films that I've watched for Asian cinema season. So this could actually jog my memory of maybe some of the videos I was happy with in terms of uh, the um, the Makoto Shinkai uh, marathon. Me and Connie did. I was really happy with that one, especially because uh, she really liked the films, particularly the last one. And I feel like we that was a really good like half an hour mini movie marathon video. I think I was really happy with how it turned out. You know, I did a couple of movie vlogs here and there. That they, they, I mean, movie vlogs are very just you know they're very simple. Like, there's, there's nothing to really be proud of with those videos. But um, yeah, so I, I guess really the Apu Trilogy stuff, and uh, if you really want to see me enthusiastic and passionate about film, uh, check out my Tam Papa review and the making of Tam Papa review, which I was so jazzed up to talk about. I was just so fucking excited and enthusiastic about filmmaking and all that kind of stuff, that that was just such a great... Uh, review to make I think so yeah that, that's that's pretty much it and the Kurosawa in color marathon I think to me is the centerpiece of the month I was really happy with it and also um, the the guests uh, for Asian cinema season I was really happy that I had a few guys come on to uh, talk about Asian films and uh, we had a touch of film talking about the Korean new wave we had Brian Lomax talking about Zhang Yi Mu films we had Ryan Shatway talking about his love of Godzilla that was a great one we had Jambo Shango and Randy Mold doing a movie night for Train to, to Busan. So thanks to all those guys again for taking part. It was great to have you involved. Robbie, uh, I don't know what's, what's going to happen because we were supposed to work out a video. He was reviewing a an anime film called Fireworks, I believe. And the file got lost in translation in my, my spam folder and I still haven't received it from him. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Maybe that'll be just kind of like an extra video uh, somewhere down the line. I don't know. So yeah. Now, I thought I would I would kind of end the this video, this kind of reflection, looking back. Well, actually, no, I haven't. Okay, again, mishmash. But the things I didn't get to, now, there was a lot of plans. There was a lot of plans. There was going to be a huge martial arts section. In fact, even in the, the thumbnail or the kind of the title card for Asian cinema season that you see in most of the begin, beginning of these videos has images from Rashomon, uh, Perfect Blue, in the mood for love and a touch of zen and a touch of zen was the only one i didn't get to out of that thumbnail which kind of bugs me really but there was going to be loads of martial arts films reviewed from the book thousand more movies you must see before you die there was going to be the jackie chan film we did talk about that was the only one i got to and it was a great one to get to don't get me wrong but i wanted to do enter the dragon i wanted to do uh, crouching tiger hidden dragon i wanted to do a couple of the um shaw brothers movies that were in the book there's a couple more as well. There's quite a lot of martial arts films that I wanted to get to, but just didn't have the touch of Zen. Come drink with me. That was another one or another couple. So those martial arts reviews. I wish I'd gotten to more Korean films. I bought the um, how was it the the Handmaiden? I think yeah, a new film. I, I wanted to get to that. Never got around to it. In fact, there's probably some on the shelf that I didn't get to. No, there isn't. Okay. <laughs> um, there must be. There's a few more. There's the, yeah, but uh, Karida. I wanted to get to his movies. Didn't have the time. So there's just a lot of. Uh, plans and ideas so hopefully next year which i do plan to do uh, asian cinema season 2018 i'll make sure it's just a month i don't want to go beyond that i think it's it's overkill you know it's been fun extending it but i think just just a month and planning out a bit better i think next year would be a good thing to go with um, so there we go that's kind of my, my thoughts on you know things i could have done better maybe you know uh, but i'm, I'm ov overall happy with how everything was spaced out and stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did, leave your thoughts down below if there are any specific videos you liked. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, now my top 20 of Asian cinema season 2017. Although I haven't seen the rest of the Zatoichi movies, I doubt any of them are going to crack the top 20. As much as I've been enjoying them, and you'll hear all about that at some point very soon. Now, I have 59 movies in this letterbox list, um, which are actually, okay... If you want to see me really rant about a movie, go check out the In the Realm for the Senses review, which has been quite controversial. I got some really nasty messages about that one too. It's so funny how people take films, or opinions on films even, so seriously into heart. It's a movie, guys. I didn't like it. So, I'm going to go with the top 20, but not from the list as I have it here, because this includes every film I watched, including rewatches. So, currently at the number one spot is Tokyo Story. But I'd already seen that. 
And uh, and that, that was another thing about Asian cinema season. I introduced Connie to a few films. Uh, you know, Tokyo Story, which she didn't love as much as I would hope. In the Mood for Love, which she didn't like that much. Um, the Ballad of Nariyama, which she stopped watching because she hated it. So <laughs> there's been quite a few misfires in that sense. But anyway, right, my top 20 films I'd seen for the first time during Asian cinema season 2017. So let me kind of work this out in my head. Number 20, Zatoichi's Flashing Sword. This is the seventh movie in the Zatoichi series. I fucking loved it. it I was not expecting it as well. And spoilers, I think that the seventh, eighth, and ninth movies are kind of my favorite run in the series so far. I really wasn't expecting any of them to be better than the first one, which I loved, and the seventh one, which is so fucking cool. Uh, number 19, we have Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. That one really surprised me. I thought it was not going to be that good. And seeing how CGI the animation got, I just thought it wasn't going to hold up, you know, to the, the original. But it's not as good as the original, but it's pretty close. I thought it was fantastic. I love the themes and the ideas and the visuals. And some of that CGI is a bit outdated, but I, I loved it. I, I was really surprised by Ghost in the Shell 2. Number 18... Apu Asansa, The World of Apu, the third film in the Apu trilogy from Sachi Jit Rai. I loved it, you know, it, it's, a, it's kind of a flawed film in, in many ways, but I think there's a really heartfelt one, and one that really got to me, uh, and I just loved the, the natural feel of it, which I can say for most of Sachi, well, all of Sachi Jit Rai's films that I've seen, there are only four so far, anyway. Uh, number was it, 17, uh, Madadayao. Uh, Akira Kurosawa's final film, and you'll hear my thoughts on that in the marathon, so I'll leave that one there. And actually, if you don't want to be spoiled my thoughts on those films, you might want to turn off this list. Number 16, Tomorrow I Will Date With Yesterday Is You. Uh, not, not really a great film from uh, last year, but one that really impacted me emotionally. It really, really got to me, and uh, I thought it was terrific because of that. It wasn't a very good film, if you think about it logically, but sometimes that doesn't matter. Number 15, a Bride for Rip Van Winkle, a recent Japanese film, three hours long. Again, I, I reviewed all of these, so you can go and check my thoughts, but that one was, um, it really got to me by the end, and it's a real interesting film that uh, the concept is, is uh, it just spouts off from, from where you originally think it's going to go. And there's a few kinks, you know, a few chinks in the armor, I suppose you could say, but it's it, overall a great film. Number 14, Rhapsody in August. Uh, one of Kurosawa's, his second, his penultimate film. Lee, if you're watching, penultimate means the one before the last one. Number 13 is Fight Zatoichi Fight, the eighth movie in the series, which is currently my favorite. Kage Musha, another Kurosawa film. Epic, loved it. Tattoo and Akadai. Kira Kurosawa, you can't go wrong. Number 11, Close Up by Abbas Kiristami. Loved the film, just so, so good. Uh, and again, I talked about that and gushed about it ad nauseum in the review itself. Number 10, Willow and Wind, another Iranian film which was written by Abbas Kiristami, which makes it even cooler now, retrospectively. Simple film about a boy trying to take a pane of glass back to his school across the countryside during a storm. Wonderful little film. Number 9, Through the, Ol Through the Olive Trees. Wonderful film. Number 9, Through the Olive Trees, another film by Kiristami, my favorite one so far, I think. I think Close Up is a better film. But I really just adored Through the Olive Trees, um, which is a film that's just about the shooting of a single scene of another movie, and about the drama that goes on behind the scenes of filming that scene. I thought it was wonderful. Number eight, joint, we have Tampopo and the making of Tampopo. Um, I have the making of just under the film itself because I loved it almost as much, but it was such, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to rate documentaries against real films, uh, you know, fictional films, but it was so... Uh, mesmerizing to me just to see the process of every single step on that making of and the film itself I just loved so much so yeah number seven the 1958 version of the Ballad of Nariyama really surprised me I think I enjoy it more than the 80s version now just a stunning piece of work all done on stage but done so expertly and it's a it's a stage film that I is unlike any other one I've seen before the way that they use it and present it like a kabuki stage play but in a movie, it's just so brilliantly done. Number six, Akira Kurosawa's Dreams. And if you want to hear me talk about that film at great length, stay tuned for the Kurosawa in Color Marathon. That is the biggest part of the video, is me talking about that, that film endlessly. Number five, The Music Room by Satyajit Rai. This was just a, I'll use the word masterpiece, this absolute, just incredible character study on the ego. 
a brilliant film, absolutely incredible. Number four, Perfect Blue, the uh, the anime film from Satoshi Kon, I believe. What I just one of the best animated films I think I've ever seen. Just it's it's like a David Fincher film or a Darren Aronofsky film, but animated and in Japan. Like it's just such an intense thriller that is so brilliantly done visually. Like it's one of those films that has that kind of symbolism in it, but it really works for me. Uh, I just thought it was phenomenal. Number three. Close Knit, which is a very recent film and is a simple story about a young girl whose mother leaves and she has to go and stay with her uncle and his new girlfriend who is transsexual. You'd think it would be this political movie with a big message about the, the LGBT community and all that kind of stuff, and in one sense it is, but in another sense it just treats it like it should be treated. It's just another person and it doesn't really matter because it's the person you're looking at not the, the sexual orientation and that's what the film is about but it's also just about this girl who finds a new family and and, and, and I just oh, it, it really got to me it really did I thought it was a tremendous drama and while others probably wouldn't like it because it might be a little bit too melodramatic I just thought that uh, the way it made me feel overrode any kind of uh, you know discrepancies there might be in the filmmaking which I don't think there are but it is a bit sickly sweet but you know sometimes I connect with that shit too number two and it's really difficult to separate these two films for me, but the number two spot is probably the best film I've seen for the first time in Asian cinema season. And it is from Satyajit Rai, Patha Panchali, the first film in the Apu trilogy. Though this film to me doesn't feel like a part of an Apu trilogy. It feels like a story about a mother uh, trying to keep her family together in a, a you know, a, a poverty, you know, ridden house that they live in, in, uh, in the countryside, in India, in the beginning of the, you know, the 1900s, and yeah, it's just an amazing film that just celebrates life, and, you know, I, again, I talked about it in depth in my review, so go check that out if you haven't, and that's another thing I guess I can mention before I get to my number one pick, is that someone apparently, they commented on the video saying that they went and bought the Apu Trilogy DVD after seeing my review, and they loved Path of Pan Charlie, thought it was an amazing film. Now, I, I don't want to presume that it was solely my review that made them go and buy the DVD set, but if that was true, that's just the coolest fucking thing in the world to me. As a movie lover, as someone who loves to kind of talk about films, to, to listen to people talking about films, to influence someone to go and check out something that they love is uh, just the greatest thrill for me. But it also works in the opposite as well, where I posted a From the Vault video, which was a Blu-ray Brothers special, the old channel we used to do, me, Ryan Chatway, and Robbie Webster, we did a Seven Samurai video. I posted that for Asian Cinema Season, and someone said that they liked the video, but they watched the film because of it, and they hated Seven Samurai, so it's like, <laughs> wow. Whew, hated Seven Samurai, I don't know what to say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's worth a shot. You know, it's worth a shot of uh, making videos about these films people might not have heard before and pushing myself to watch these films I'd never heard of before. You know, so I think that's, that's, the, that's the coolest thing. And again, I do think I wish I could have watched some more Korean films, uh, Chinese films, uh, definitely lacking, I feel like. I try my best, but I'm always going to lean more over to that Japanese side. It's just my, my preference. Um... I really love Japanese films, but you know, I tried my best and next year I'll uh, endeavor to include more Chinese films, more Korean films and, and so on. But I liked that I got to India and Iran as well, different countries, not just Japan and stuff. So anyway, my number one, number one film of Asian cinema season 2017, Desu Uzala from Akira Kurosawa. Again, I think Path of Panchali is a better film. But even, you know, Close Knit, which is my number three, you know, that's way down above what most of the other films I talk about. You know, Perfect Blue is a much better film than Close Knit, you know. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, the Music Room was a much better film than Close Knit. But you got to go with your preference. These are my favorites like, that came out of it. And Dasu Ozala has stuck with me. I keep thinking about it. It keeps making me happy thinking about it. And I can't wait to watch it again. I can't wait to watch it again. I have that same feeling with Path of Panchali, but this one, it's a special film. It's a special film to me, and I'm so glad that I watched it, and I can't wait for there to be a really good Blu-ray release of it at some point. Anyway, so there we go. I've waffled on for far too long with this video. I didn't mean it to go this long, but it is kind of the end of Asian cinema season, so I've reflected. I've kind of given you a channel update, given you a top 20, so that's about it. Uh, from now, in real time, I'm probably going to be going in, well, I will be going into Radio Silence Quasi uh, for the next week, because The Last Jedi is coming out next Wednesday, so I'll be avoiding the internet for a while. 
there's a few videos scheduled to go up, so you'll still be seeing videos from me, but I won't be replying to any comments. So don't uh, feel offended if I ignore them because I'm not ignoring them. I'm just waiting till next week and I'll get back to all your comments uh, after Wednesday. So yeah, I love I love reading your comments. I love replying to them. So um, yeah, just just kind of um, uh, hold on to your hats for for about a week or so. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...